Um, actually, this presentation is going to be done by, by me and um, Anthony Cole. Anthony, he's the Senior Vice President uh, for Midel Americas. Um, he's been uh, with the company for a while now, and uh, he, he runs the uh, commercial operations here um, in, in North America. Um, so uh, my name is Janesh Malde. I'm the Senior Applications Engineer at uh, M&I Materials. Um, and I've been with the company for uh, over five years now. Um, I, I provide uh, technical support uh, in the use of Midel esters in, in the uh, North and South American market. Uh, we make the Midel brand um, of natural and synthetic esters. And uh, today's presentation is really going to discuss about, you know, what are, uh, what are ester liquids? How are they used in uh, transformers? Um, you know, what are some of the differences to mineral oil? Um, as well as uh, some very interesting case studies where they've been used and, uh, you know, um, what the future looks like um, in using ester liquids. So what you see uh, on the screen currently, this is, m &I is the name of our company. Uh, we make different products. Uh, um, uh, we, we make different products. Um, so the first one that you see there is APAZON. Um, this is a high vacuum sealant that's uh, typically used in, uh, um, in places like the space station, um, it, it, it's, a, it's lubricant that's used to create uh, vacuum seals. Uh, we make the Metrosil brand of uh, varistors. These are typically used in about uh, 80 or 90 percent hydro uh, dams around the world for uh, protecting synchronous generators. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about metal shortly, but we also make Wolfmet, which is tungsten heavy alloy metal. Um, this is uh, typically used, um, you know, in, in creating dense uh, metal uh, parts, um, such as the one used in Formula One cars. Uh, we do supply to airplane companies like Boeing um, and others. And we make MyVolt, which is uh, which are which are dielectric liquids that are used for immersion cooling um, of uh, um, different equipment. So it's used in electric vehicles for battery cooling. Uh, it's used as a dielectric liquid in, in cooling data centers and things like that. And um, for and we make Midel, which is what uh, uh, we'll mainly be talking about today. Um, so Midel, it, it, it's uh, uh, Midel brand. It, it cover it, what we do there is we manufacture ester liquids, natural and synthetic ester liquids that are used in transformer application. Okay, so. What you see on the screen here is, is it's just a screenshot of what our um, history looks like. So we've been around since, uh, Midel esters have been around since the 1970s. The first application um, in transformers was in 1978. Um, it was used uh, by British uh, to make, uh, uh, to, to retrofill British steel furnace transformers. Um, the original use was to remove PCBs out of out of transformers and replace them with uh, fire safe liquids. That's how we um, started the use of it. And through the years, we, you know, Midel esters have been used in small distribution transformers all the way now uh, to, to um, 2021, where it's used in large power transformers. Um, the largest uh, transformer ever manufactured with an ester liquid it's uh, 433 kV which is uh, which is actually located in uh, let's say Sweden um, these were hydro power uh, station transformers and currently there you know we, we have quite a few transformers in in uh, North America that already have mitel esters and some of these will cover them in case studies um, here is a screenshot of the applications in more details, as well as discussing, you know, what are some of the, uh, how versatile ester liquids are in use. So on the top left corner is, um, uh, uh, it's a liquid natural gas plant, um, which is located in Arctic Circle. Um, in this application, uh, you know, the, the, the dielectric liquid has to be able to operate at extreme cold temperatures. And so this is a place where our synthetic ester, Midel 7131, is used because it has a pore point of minus 56 degrees C, so it can operate in extreme cold temperatures. Below that, what you're seeing is um, a substation that is located um, uh, at, the, uh, at the seabed. Now, 
from the picture, it may not look that big, but this is as big as a football field, maybe a little bit bigger than that. And the transformer there is filled with uh, mitral ester because it can it can withstand the pressure at that um, uh, uh, at the at the bottom of the ocean. Um, below that is another application uh, on the other end of the spectrum as far as temperatures is goes. This is this is uh, Kuwait City where it can get uh, close to 50 degrees Celsius and uh, mitral esters are used in those transformers as well because it can handle the higher ambient uh, temperatures. Mitral esters are, are also used in uh, regular distribution transformers. Um, here is a production line where thousands and thousands of transformers are, are manufactured with our natural ester dielectric liquid. Um, here is a picture of New York City because Con Edison, which is the utility, ha has been using Mitel uh, synthetic ester for their power transformers, um, rating all the way up to 345 kV. Um, the fastest trains around the world, they use mitral esters as well in their traction transformers. When, you, when we think of application, this is probably the most um, uh, intense uh, application for transformers because these are high temperature transformers. The trains have to go from zero to um, you know, high speed in, in a few seconds. So the transformer has to energize very quickly and, and, it, has to, and, and it has to be able to handle the load. And this is an, uh, an application where um, mitral esters are used. Um, this is the Let's See um, location that I had discussed earlier. This is where the largest uh, power transformer filled with ester liquid is located. That's a 433 kV. Um, I will uh, uh, discuss, actually me or Anthony will discuss this later on uh, when we get to um, when we get to case studies because uh, there are quite a few there are quite a few details here. Um, that will provide more, more input on that. And offshore wind is is where we're seeing quite a few, uh, quite a few transformers being used. Um, the reason for that is because these dielectric liquids do not catch on fire and they're environmentally friendly. And uh, you know because they're environmentally friendly, if there is a leak or if something does uh, happen to the transformer and the insulating liquid goes in the water, uh, it would biodegrade at a much much faster rate than uh, uh, traditional mineral oil um, liquid would. So um, you know the, the question always comes, you know, what are we seeing? What are some of the changes that are taking place uh, uh, for substations around the world? Um, so the first thing that's listed over here is that you know there is there is more and more funding available and or it's being talked about um, to upgrade the electrical infrastructure. So for example, we are all seeing in the news that uh, um, we're all seeing in the news that. Uh, uh, over a trillion, um, uh, over a trillion dollars is being um, talked about to, uh, in the federal spending. This is all part of it is to also improve the electrical infrastructure. Uh, we're also seeing that China is uh, is also spending over 900 billion uh, from 2020 to 2025. Uh, there's also more investment uh, taking place in Europe uh, as well. Um, what we're also seeing around the world is that utilities are now trying to find technology that will make um, you know, their, their uh, company more resilient to uh, what's happening. Um, as we all know, we're seeing more and more environmental um, uh, events taking place uh, around the world. Um, last year, for example, 20 climate uh, events took place in US alone. Um, and so this is also what's driving utilities to look and uh, look at technology that can help them uh, become more resilient. Digitization is also something that's taking place uh, currently. Um, transformers are, are requiring to have more and more monitoring on them, whether that's dissolved gas or temperature, moisture. Um, so as the technology is progressing and more and more monitoring is taking place, um, more data is also being created. Um, and the next thing is urbanization. So, I mean, last year is an exception to what was happen happening um, due to the pandemic where people were moving out of the big cities and, and, and trying to get out of the cities. But looking at the macro trend, what, what we're still seeing is that um, um, more and more 
um, you know, people are moving into the cities and the cities, cities are expanding and, 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 you know, be, due to this expansion, the, the uh, land availability is becoming less and less. So utilities have to try to find innovative ways um, to deal with that. And sustainability, um, we, we'll discuss more about sustainability in the next slide. And I believe Anthony is here and he can talk more about sustainability. Anthony, are you here? Yes, thanks, Janesh. We'll go to the next slide now. I think we've all heard the term sustainability a great deal lately. And um, really there's, there's three parts of it that uh, we sometimes forget. It's not just environmental, it's economic and social. And you've got to put those three things together and address them all equally to truly say you're working on sustainable innovations and infrastructure in the electricity industry. Um, utilities are all working toward this. And you see, if you, Think of the economic benefits first, and we'll need to build that slide, Janesh. Um, the biggest economic benefit of using esters and transformers is, is return on your investment. While there may be an upfront initial cost that's a bit more than just using a uh, standard approach with mineral oil, you'll get lower maintenance, lower operations cost. You can shrink the footprint of the substation, add value with real estate that way. You can do, reduce the complexity of fire suppression systems and containment and save a lot of money on civil work. So economically, you can make an impact with Astrofield transformers. And if you look at the next leg in the three-legged stool, the environmental side, esters are biodegradable. They're non-toxic. You can't say that about mineral oil. And they meet stricter standards than, than most transformer liquids. Um, and the natural esters are renewable. Uh, they're from vegetable crops. So you've got the environmental side well taken care of with these types of alternative liquids. And then on the social side, with the denser urban populations and electricity utility infrastructure put closer and closer to people and places where people are, you're going to see that you need to address public safety. And that means you need less flammable, non-toxic, um, less uh, risk applications in these substations. And that's what we'll talk to you to, uh, with you about today is the innovations that can take place in these substations. So let's look at what are the advantages of the chemistry of these Midel fluids that allow them to, to be used so differently than the standard approach with mineral oil and transformers. And first of all, the, the biggest difference is that because they're FM approved and UL classified liquids, you can use them differently. You can use them in closer proximity to buildings and people. And we're going to go into detail on that. So you can reduce the footprint of the substation, save money on not just land, but civil works as well. And then you've got improved asset reliability. Janesh is going to walk you through some technical details on why you can extend the insulation system life of these transformers and get more bang for your buck. Um, that relates directly to the higher return on investment, not just with the transformer in the substation, but with the entire substation operations and maintenance as well. And then of course, mitigating environmental risks. The biodegradable fluid, if there is a spill or a leak, um, your hair is not standing on end as a utility worried about what it looks like in the newspapers and the press. You've got a non-toxic chemical that can be cleaned up readily and it does not uh, affect fish, fauna, flora, and wildlife if it touches waterways or land. So let's dive a little bit deeper into each of these. First of all, when we talk about Midel ester transformer liquids, what, what do we mean? Well, there's two big groups of ester liquids, and you may have heard of one or both of them being used for transformers as dielectric cooling fluids. The first is synthetic ester. And Midel invented this, m &I Materials invented this uh, over four decades ago in the late 70s through the reaction of an alcohol with a short chain fatty acid. It was specifically designed to be used in transformers, especially power transformers at the time to replace PCBs. And then more recently, we've seen the emergence of natural esters in the last couple of decades. And these are vegetable-based, seed oil-derived uh, ester oils that are 99% or more bio-based. And 
The Midel esters are USDA, Department of Agriculture certified bio-based products. So they are renewable because they are derived from uh, crops. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the chemical molecular structure of esters. And forgive me for a moment, I'm a chemical engineer. I can geek out a little bit on this, but I won't go too far. But I just want to point out that typical mineral oil molecules, whether they're paraffinic or naphthenic um, or isoparaffinic, they, they look like these pictures here and, and they do not have polar charges. And ester molecules, both synthetic and natural, have these polar charged, double bonded, unsaturated oxygen double bonded links to the carbon. And this is a particular noteworthy molecular interface here because you get polarity. And with polarity, you get some magic with esters and how they react with water. And I'll show you that on the next slide. Whereas water is a polar charged H2O molecule, you're all familiar with it. And the basic extra ester structure has this polar charge I just pointed out to you. What this means is that you get hydrogen bonding. You get this magnetic attraction to water where you bind it up and you don't release it. And this is particularly important in a transformer environment where water is a breakdown product from the cellulose aging. And if any water in ingresses to the system, you will be able to bind it up with ester chemical, ester chemistry that is. Um, this means it won't separate, it won't um, gas, it won't form a separate layer like it would with mineral oil. And so this property of esters is really what drives the extended life and performance of uh, esters as transformer liquids. Let's dive a little bit deeper into some of these, uh, these um, basic parameters that help set esters apart from mineral oil. And on this slide, you'll see we, we compare to basic transformer mineral oil with both our Midel soybean-based natural ester, our Midel canola or rapeseed-based natural ester, and then our Midel synthetic ester. And each one of those is a biodegradable, um, go ahead and click the slide, we'll focus in on moisture saturation, I just mentioned why they can take higher moisture saturation and not have a voltage breakdown. You see, moisture is a big problem for mineral oil and everybody who uses it is worried about those 55 parts per million and exceeding that. You see, you can go clearly up from there and especially with Midel 7131 without any issue, issues to the uh, electric performance of the uh, liquid. And then you'll see that all of the esters, the mito esters are biodegradable and mineral oil is not. Now the biggest point for design engineers and substation designers is, is the fire point and the fire safety class. To be K class or FM approved as a less flammable insulating liquid, you've got to be over 300 degrees C fire point, which you see um, all three of the Midel esters are. Um, and then there's, and that's when you get what's classified as K class, fire safety class. You'll see mineral oil is O class, which really O should stand for zero because it, it's not very fire safe at all. And then on top of the K or the O, you see a one, two, or a three. And this represents really the, um, the cal net calorific value of the fuel source. The higher the number, three being the highest, means it has less um, less calorific value if it was to be consumed in a fire. So the Midel 7131 gives you the highest fire safety class with a K3. Mineral oil gives you the lowest. And the natural esters are K2, which is still very good. So Janesh is going to now walk you through a little bit deeper about why this particular Midel ester chemistry helps improve the insulation performance. Thank you, Anthony. Um, so what you saw earlier on, it's, it's uh, uh, as far as moisture is concerned, it, it's, it's very critical to transformers. So um, transformer design engineers have to make sure that they can address the, the moisture um, uh, 
uh, content issues in, in, in different manner, all the way from designing transformers to manufacturing. Uh, and then the end users have to also figure out how to maintain those transformers because moisture is one of the properties that can cause um, uh, many issues within the transformer. So even though ester liquids can hold more moisture than mineral oil, it can retain the dielectric breakdown strength at the higher moisture content. So this is critical because, you know, um, one of the properties that Anthony showed you earlier is that the moisture quantity in ester liquids is higher. So we always get the question uh, from, from the end user to, you know, that why, you know, if, if the moisture is higher in ester liquids, why is it that they can still retain the breakdown strength? And that has to do with just the chemical nature of the dielectric liquid. It holds the moisture at a stronger bond, hence it allows for the dielectric breakdown uh, properties to, to also be retained. The higher moisture saturation capability of the ester liquid allows the cellulose material to age slower, hence it improves the life of the insulation in the transformer and it also and or it, it allows the insulation system to operate at higher temperatures and I, I'll explain this in, in the next slide. <clears throat> so in this slide, what I want to show you is what the aging mechanism of cellulose is inside the transformer. So when you think of a transformer, um, it has many things in it, but the key components in the transformer are the insulating liquid. Um, it has uh, the conductor, which is typically either copper or, or uh, aluminum. It has the core steel and, and, and all of this. Um, and as far as the windings is, is concerned, it's usually held in place by the solid insulation, which, in, which is typically cellulose material. So when you think of cellulose material and, and look at it from a microscopic standpoint, this is what cellulose chains would look like. And in a transformer, you'll typically have heat and oxygen. The heat would be generated from, you know, the, 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 when, when a transformer is energized, you'll have the load loss, no load loss. That's where the heat will typically be generated. And you'll have the presence of oxygen as well. So what typically happens is that the heat and oxygen will break down the cellulose chains and create long chain acids um, and water and short chain acids in mineral oil. And what happens is that the, some of the uh, water is held by the uh, mineral oil, depending on what the saturation limit is at the temperature. Um, now, the short chain acids and the remaining water, what happens to that is that it, it goes in and it helps break down the cellulose chain further. So this is a continuous aging process that takes place in a transformer. So what happens in the ester aging process is that you have the same cellulose material you still have the heat and oxygen. And what happens is that in an ester liquid, due to the difference in the chemical structure, it, there are long chain acids produced and more water is actually held um, in the insulating liquid and less of the water becomes available to add to the continuous breakdown of the cellulose chain. Because of this, the aging rate of uh, um, cellulose in ester liquids is slower. So what does that really mean from a practical application in a transformer? Uh, what you're seeing here is a chart that's available in the IEEE C57154 standard. And in this chart, there is a temperature range on the x-axis and there's unit uh, life of normal paper uh, on the right axis. Um, what you're seeing here, the blue line, that's what it would be for mineral oil. The green line is, is what it is for natural ester, but the same line would be applicable to synthetic ester as well. And when a transformer is operating, it's typically operating at 110 degrees C. This is calculated by 65 average winding rise plus 15 degrees C hotspot in the transformer and uh, um, 30 degrees C ambient. Um, when a transformer is operating under normal condition, it, it, it typically has a one unit life in mineral oil um, if it's uh, made from cellulose material or, or also known as thermally upgraded craft material. Now, the same, if the same cellulose material is used in an ester liquid, you can expect to have seven times the life of the transformer. So over a hundred years for the insulation uh, uh, system. On the other hand, if you increase the temperature to 130 degrees C, so 20 degrees C, you can get the same one unit life. Um, because, you know, when we think of, of transformers and, and the designs being more conservative, it, 
even if the unit, even if the transformer has just twice the amount of uh, life, or if if it, if the design is uh, done to operate at 10 degrees C, you can still expect this transformer to have better life, extended life, uh, compared to mineral oil, or you can have the capability of operating this transformer at a at a higher temperature and operating the transformer at a higher uh, temperature enables the transformer to be smaller um, to weigh less um, and that's also critical for certain applications such as um, you know um, uh, wind turbine transformers or uh, traction transformers or mobile transformers so the other benefit which uh, anthony pointed out earlier is fire safety when we think of transformer consequences, there are many uh, consequences uh, of a transformer fire. The first being um, the risk to human life. As many of us have seen, transformer fires can be severe and they can spread quickly. Um, that can pose threat to human life, especially in, in uh, highly dense, uh, highly uh, or densely populated areas. The second is downtime and production loss. FM Global, who, who is the global insurer, reported in the past 10 years that over 14% of losses uh, were due to transformer fires. So there are many, many case studies here as to what can happen when transformer fires can, can occur. But just to give, to give you some instances, you know, there are some case studies where transformer fires have taken place and, you know, businesses have not been able to operate in the same location for over six months due to the smoke created or the fire was so severe that it burnt down the building or, or something around the building which was sensitive. The big one, which is not talked uh, a lot about, is reputational damage. So due to severe transform fires that can last for days or more, it can be a PR nightmare and it can affect the reputation of end users. So sometimes it's, it's really important to consider all these factors to, to make a decision on whether, uh, you know, what would be the best technology to try to keep, to, to make the transformers safe. So, what I wanted to show you was uh, a test that is done on uh, flammability of, of mityl ester liquids in comparison to mineral oil. Now, there are many tests like these. In fact, there are tests that have been done to simulate uh, uh, leaks inside a transformer, uh, tank ruptures, um, as well as you know, um, trying to light the whole transformer on fire. And in all, all those situations, you know, it's, it's evident that ester liquids are fire safe in comparison to mineral oil. So in this uh, example here, there's a pan um, and there's an acetylene torch put on top of the pan. The pan is filled with mineral oil and uh, mityl 7131, which is a synthetic ester. And what you can see here is that at 95 degrees C after three minutes, the liquid is already starting to catch on fire. Whereas in the synthetic ester, there is nothing happening after three minutes. Now, when you look at the same pan after uh, at 100 degrees C, in four minutes, the pan has caught on fire with mineral oil. Whereas with mityl 7131, it's all the way up 230 degrees C, and it's, it's at 70 minutes, and there is no fire that has occurred yet so this just goes to show the the uh, fire safety aspect of using um, uh, an ester liquid so here is is the hierarchy of safety control uh, as used in the industry to minimize or eliminate exposure to hazard it is widely accepted system promoted by numerous uh, safety organizations um, the hierarchy of control is a step-by-step -step approach to eliminate or reduce risk, and it uh, ranks uh, risk control from the highest level of protection and reliability through the lowest and least reliable protection. Eliminating the hazard and risk is the highest level of control in the hierarchy, followed by reducing the risk through substitution, isolation, and engineering controls. Um, then reducing the risk through administrative controls. <clears throat> reducing the risk through the use of protect, uh, protective personal equipment is the lowest level of control. So then the question is always, how safe are the current practice? Um, the, the best practice to rely on fire suppression and containment is not the best in the class uh, uh, anymore. 
Um, esters, the specifications move the hierarchy um, even without the engineering controls. So I want to show you a quote from Terry Lee, who's the group manager of field engineers at FM Global. He said that eliminating the hazard by replacing mineral oil with less flammable ester fluid is the most effective loss prevention solution. Now, we always talk about, you know, okay, if the transformer is less flammable, is there anything else that it can help out with? Um, it, it can, and in this slide, what I want to show you is the FM Global um, uh, guidelines as far as distances is concerned and fire protection around a transformer. This is from the FM Global data sheet 5-4. What you're seeing on the right side here is the guidance that's there for mineral oil filled uh, transformer. So what you're seeing here is that there is a building. Um, there are two transformers uh, and, and between the building and the transformer, there's firewall as well as, you know, there, there's a containment here and the, there, there's 50 uh, feet distance from the pad edge and 25 uh, feet distance from the building uh, uh, firewall. Now, on the other hand, when you look at a mitral astrofield transformer, there is no need for firewall and the distance has significantly been reduced to five feet um, from the pad edge as well as from the, uh, 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 from, uh, the transformer to the building. Um, if you notice, the containment here is much smaller as well compared to what it would be with mineral oil field uh, transformers. So what are some of the immediate benefits? One is that the firewall would not be required. That means that uh, you're saving money in, in, in the cost of installing a firewall. The other thing is that there may also be a um, uh, possibility of remo removing the fire suppression system. So we have case studies around the world where you know deluge system or sprinkler system is not placed over the transform because you know the utility or the end user was actually doing the study were able to justify that by removing the the sprinkler system, they were able to still um, eliminate the fire uh, hazard. So there would be a much smaller safety zone as well. And what, the, what all that would really mean is that less material would be needed, um, less costs as far as labor um, and, and, and material as well, uh, less real estate. So because the containment is much smaller, the area around the transformer can be used for other applications. And, and there'll be more details on this in, in, a, in a case study or two. So the other benefits, which is which are key, are risk to human um, uh, life. I mean, you're eliminating uh, a fire hazard, which is going to be uh, better for the people. Um, you're in also reducing environmental risk, and I'll discuss that uh, in a few um, uh, slides. And also um, insurance. So by using a less flammable liquid, some of the insurers are also providing better uh, premiums on, on, the, um, on the property than, than it would be with mineral oil filled transformer. And last but not risk, uh, last, last but not least is, is disruption to business. Um, when we think of mitral esters in the 40 years that we've been in, in business, um, we have not had one transformer fire reported to us. And that's because uh, it's quite difficult for an ester liquid to catch on fire. And in transformer application with the fire, uh, with the fire protection uh, provided, as well as the, uh, the, the fire preventative measures taken in the transformer, it's, it's quite difficult uh, to have a transformer take place in mitral field transformer. Now, when we think of indoor guidelines, here is what you see for a mineral oil field transformer. There would be three hour firewall between uh, for, for building around the transformers. And if you have three transformers, the transformer would have to have individual containment as well as three hour fire uh, uh, barrier between them. When you think of a mitral field transformer, it can share uh, a common containment. It can just be a standard room and there would be reduction in space uh, as well. And another key point here is the deluge system. There would be no requirement to have a deluge system over the transformer. So the other benefit I want to highlight is environmental protection. <clears throat> Mitral ester liquids are con 
are considered biodegradable and non-toxic. Um, they are the only esters with carbon zero um, additives. Our uh, uh, canola and uh, uh, soybean are sustainably sourced. In fact, the canola crop yield is twice as much as soybean. So <clears throat> you can produce, uh, there can be more canola oil with the same amount as soybean, uh, twice as much as soybean. Um, and the barrier system can be simplified because uh, of several factors, but one of them being when you have a simple, when you have the, the fire suppression system removed over a transformer and the transformers are closer, closely located to each, uh, cl located to each other, you can simplify the containment and bring it closer. And the other benefit is uh, biodegradability. So mityl esters are considered readily biodegradable. What does that mean? So biodegradability is determined through uh, a test that is done um, by OECD. The, the test method is OECD 301B. Um, in this test method, what they typically do is they take the insulating liquid, they put microbes in the insulating liquid, they measure how much carbon dioxide is uh, produced and how much oxygen is consumed. The test take place, takes place over a 28 day period. And the biodegradation is measured over the, the time frame. So when the biodegradation, if the biodegradation, if the biodegradation is over 60%, then the ester liquid or any other dielectric liquid is considered relatively, uh, relatively uh, readily biodegradable. So when you look at this chart, mineral oil has a very low biodegradability and silicone liquid as well, whereas mityl esters have a biodegradability over 60%, synthetic ester has over 80%, whereas natural ester is over 90%. So what does that mean? Um, that really means that in case there is a spill that takes place, um, the ester liquid will biodegrade at a much faster, fa faster rate uh, than mineral oil would. Um, that would help with the reduction in cost of cleanup. Um, the other thing is that mityl esters are non-toxic and non-volatiles, and that can, they may also allow for a less complicated containment system to be around the transformer, but that would be dependent um, not only on, on the local state, but also on the federal uh, regulations uh, uh, as to where the transformer is placed. So in summary, what I want to highlight is that when when mityl esters are used in, in transformer application, they lower the risk of uh, transformer fire uh, from taking place um, and less uh, fire protection would be required, which would also mean less maintenance of the fire protection equipment. Um, it would also lower the environmental risk. What I mean by that is if there's a spill, uh, the remediation cost and the reclamation cost would be much less compared to mineral oil. And as I had shown earlier, the civil costs, uh, civil engineering costs would be less uh, when using the, the uh, an ester liquid. The reason for that is because, you know, you, you would be saving money in, in not having firewalls around the transformer, the containment system would be slower, and the real estate around the transformer would also be used for uh, other applications um, rather than it just being space uh, required to for the containment. Um, there are more and more standards now available that can be used to not only design transformers to maintain them, but also for, to, to, uh, with regards to the fire protection around these transformers. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it over to Anthony to talk about uh, some of the innovative case studies uh, with MIDO transformers. Thanks, Janesh. I know we're growing short on time, so I'm going to try and go through these rather quickly. Uh, our first uh, case study is a substation outside of downtown London, very densely populated urban area, and um, it was taking up an entire city block. It was a, a substation that was already in place. Keep building the slide, um, and you'll see this footprint here, and well, we went right past the uh, transformer. It, the transformer is an interesting transformer in that it's got an outside cladding on it that allows it to collect waste heat. Um, and then that is used to uh, heat a school nearby. So it's a very innovative solution when designing the substation. 
You'll also see that the footprint in this yellow block and took up the entire city block. The new substation with three transformers that were sized larger and more powerful were all Midel transformers, and they were able to take up a much smaller footprint. And therefore, you were able to build uh, mixed use and residential apartment complexes and buildings all around that new substation in what used to be a footprint of an entire city block substation. So a, a lot of innovation used here. And uh, this has been up and running. We've toured it. It's a fantastic um, case study in substation innovation. On the next slide, we're going to look at um, uh, offshore wind farms and substations offshore where formerly the substation was large, mineral oil field transformers had almost four stories of infrastructure and, and building cladding for containment, fire suppression, water collection, you name it. And now the new designs are featuring Midel transformers that no longer need all of that complex containment. And there's over 40% savings in just the structural materials, time to construct, time to install that you'll see in that simplified and innovative approach. Now, another uh, innovation with substations on the next slide, you'll see in Scottish Power, their energy networks, they've got a very large uh, network underground um, on Princess Street, which is their high-end retail street. And the worst case happened, they had two fire incidents where the transformers caught on fire and really damaged all of the business above. Um, so business continuity was interrupted, insurance claims were lodged, not just from the utility, but all those businesses. They did a very large research on what they should do to change all of that. And long story short is they ended up rolling out a program where they use all Midel 7131 synthetic esters in those uh, underground network um, and radial network uh, transformers embedded. Um, next one is a, is a one from Down Under where Worley Parsons actually uh, looked into how to save money at a very large substation installation at a new um, mining complex. And the Worley engineer said, basically, why wouldn't you specify Midel? It's completely de-risk the project and save us over $3 million in concrete. That, no firewalls really is the basic answer here. And a lot less uh, complex containment when you're using a Midel product there. On the next slide, and again, I apologize for going through these so quickly, is a brand new case study. It was just published in TND World Online Magazine last month. And uh, it was written by the engineers at We Energy in Wisconsin. And it was all about 265 MVA power transformers put in a, a underground substation that became part of a very high density mixed use residential, high, high cost of uh, real estate uh, development there. And uh, those two um, SPX uh, transformers are live now and uh, that building is now selling and uh, people are living in apartments above it and businesses are conducting uh, business, retail business above those transformers. And uh, it was all designed to be fire safe and blend in and save money in valuable real estate market. I think that's all the time we have for right now for those case studies. We can provide more later, but okay. really um, we'll open it up to Q and A now. Great, thanks very much, Anthony. We uh, let's start our questions. We have a number of them. One of one of them is from Steve Larson. Steve happens to be our substation maintenance uh, instructor, who is with uh, Snohomish Power. He Steve wanted to know: Can the ester fluids be used in the load tap changer compartment of a power transformer? Janesh. So. Um, if this is for a retrofill application, it would, it would have to be discussed with the tap changer manufacturer. Um, now, as far as, uh, um, you know, if it's a new tap changer, there are tap changers that are designed uh, to work with ester liquids and, and we can provide more information on that. Okay, next question. Can we use the ester oil directly in our old transformer in case we decide for oil replacement? So yes, ester liquids can be used um, to retrofill the transformers. Um, 
Now, it, we do uh, recommend that uh, several things be looked at. What, one is, you know, what is the voltage level? Not we, we typically do not recommend to just go ahead and retrofill a transformer if it if the voltage level is over 69 uh, kV. For trans, uh, typically the transform manufacturers, from a dielectric standpoint, make the design similar for mineral oil and ester filled transformer. Above, above 69, they do make uh, changes to the design dielectrically. So that would have to be taken into consideration. So we would recommend, you know, whoever is interested in doing a retrofill to reach out to us and we can discuss uh, okay. um, that uh, uh, and, and provide more guidance on that. Okay, yeah, and along, Randy, just in adding to that, we've also got um, certified MIDAL service partners in the field that can provide um, quotes and engineering information on retrofilling transformers with MIDAL. Okay. Joven Momek, uh, asked uh, we said we use fr3 oil how is this oil how does this oil compare to mydel oil types okay so um fr3 is a soybean based natural ester we have mydel en 1215 which is a similar product it's made from soybean um, we have Mydel EN 1204, which is a canola-based natural ester that has uh, better cold temperature performance um, and also uh, slightly better oxidation stability than soybean natural esters have. And the synthetic ester has high oxidation stability, a pore point of minus 56 compared to the soybean, which is typically around minus 18 degrees C. So, um, so soybean natural ester, we have similar product. We have two uh, a natural and a synthetic ester that uh, depending on what the application is, may be better suited for that. Okay, um, let's see. Um, Gag and Deep wants to know, does using ester instead of mineral oil reduce the physical size of the transformer? But I think you answered that already, didn't you? So the physical size would be uh, dependent more on the transformer design rules um, and, and also what the operating conditions of the transformer would be. If it's a high temperature transformers, then it is possible that the size of the transformer would be the same or smaller. Um, if, it's a, if it's just, you know, for example, like a one-on-one -on -one substitution, the thermal um, design would have to be analyzed. In, in some situations, it might remain the same. In some, it might be a little bit bigger but it will be dependent on the transformer design. Okay, Steve has another question. Is there a difference in the oil processing procedures when filling a large power transformer with ester fluids? So the procedure as far as how you would do it would be similar. However, the temperatures at which the liquid would be filled uh, is something we would recommend to look at. What I mean by that is esters have a higher viscosity than mineral oil. So we would recommend filling the transformer at a higher temperature. Um, same equipment as mineral oil can be used, but uh, the procedure there would be to change the filters, uh, do a thorough flush of the processing equipment um, prior to uh, filling the ester liquid in the transformer. Okay. Yeah, let me add on to that answer too. We find that a lot of the field service um, companies um, are very surprised and happy to use the MIDAL 7131 synthetic ester because it has um, oxidation resistance even better than mineral oil. And if they're used to using a natural ester, uh, like a soybean oil-based ester in the past, they'll know that those, those do have form thin film oxidation and can gum up their equipment. Whereas the MIDAL 7131 uh, works just like mineral oil and actually becomes a, a very good um, solvent for getting that out of there.